Welcome back to Newsmax. Now, Senator Ted Cruz apologizes today after Ben Carson and his campaign accused him in his campaign of dirty tricks leading up to last night. Now, it all started when Carson told reporters he planned to head to Florida today to grab some fresh clothes before speaking at the National Prayer Breakfast. While well, Iowa lawmaker Steve King retweeted the report writing, saying this. Carson looks like he is out. Iowans need to know before they vote. Most will go to Cruz, I hope. Well, Carson's campaign rushed to clarify, issuing this statement. Contrary to false media reports, Dr. Ben Carson is not suspending his presidential campaign, which is stronger than ever. After spending 18 consecutive days on the campaign trail, Dr. Carson needs to go home and get a fresh set of clothes. The campaign also says they had confirmed reports of Cruz supporters telling voters that Carson had dropped out of the race, prompting this response from Carson. Reasonably happy today until I, you know, discovered the dirty tricks that were going on and people spreading rumors that I had dropped out. So there you go. With us now for more on this and what the future holds for Ben Carson and the rest of the candidates in New Hampshire, retired Army Major General Robert Dees, who is ben, Dr. Ben Carson's campaign chairman. Also joining us, presidential historian Craig Shirley of Shirley and Bannister Public Affairs. Craig is also the author of The Last Act, The Final Years, and Emerging Legacy of Ronald Reagan. Great to have you both with us. Good to be here, John and Miranda. All right, General Deese, let's start with you. Cruz's campaign says uh, that they are sorry that this took place uh, after denying, I guess, initially that there were no dirty tricks going on. But now the focus, of course, shifts to New Hampshire. Is it too late? Has the damage already been done for Dr. Ben Carson? No, I think uh, this uh, incident highlights the, the virtue of Dr. Ben Carson and the reason that he's running for president to start with. Uh, we have, must get away from uh, business as normal inside the beltway of Washington, D.C. You know, we ha must be trusted as politicians. Uh, Senator Cruz says, uh, his uh, logo says trusted, and many people last night were saying instead busted because they uh, seemed to very deliberately try to manipulate the vote even while the caucus was still going on. All right, so even though he's come out and apologized, you say it was an untrustworthy uh, type maneuver. Well, uh, definitely, and uh, I'm sure Senator Cruz, if he's the leader that uh, he says he is, he will make amends within his campaign. I assume he did not know about this, but... Uh All right, well, Craig, let's bring you in real quick here. One of the key factors of Cruz's victory last night was the so-called drop-off factors. The theory goes that supporters of Rand Paul, Mike Huckabee, Ben Carson, they did not think their candidate could actually win. So Cruz benefited from those votes, uh, those in the stop Trump category. What do you think about this? This is really a, a, a theory you, you buy into. And didn't Rubio benefit from some of those votes as well, if it is? A real thing. It seems like actually Rubio benefited more. You know, Cruz was leading in the polls for uh, two or three weeks, whereas uh, Rubio was back in the pack and only broke uh, late uh, in the last 42, 78 hours, and then a, a, a buzz started. So, if anybody benefited more, I would say it was it was uh, Marco Rubio more than uh, more than Ted Cruz. No, no doubt Cruz finished higher uh, than he did in the uh, in the polling, and so he was a benefit too, but I, beneficiary also. But uh, I think. Uh, Marco Rubio was, uh, was more, I mean, obviously uh, the one who suffered the most was, uh, was Donald Trump. And, uh, and of course, the, you know, the, uh, everybody else at the back of the pack is now reexamining their campaign and their strategy. I will say is, is that it's still the most wide open uh, Republican contest I can remember in many a year. It's exciting to say the least. General Dees, where does Ben Carson need to finish in New Hampshire to say to his supporters and the rest of the country uh, that his campaign is still in great shape? Well, uh, I'm not going to put any qualifications on New Hampshire. He'll be there uh, in about uh, 36 hours, 24 hours, and uh, he'll be uh, talking to the New Hampshire people just as the way he did in Iowa. Uh, I think uh, we're in it to win it for the long haul. Uh, we are planning on uh, New Hampshire, South Carolina, Air, uh, Nevada, and beyond. Uh, so we're, uh, we have good ground game in all of those. New Hampshire, uh, our folks are working it hard right now. We look forward to a debate. Uh, in New Hampshire on Saturday night. That will be good to be a truth teller again uh, to the American people. And Craig, last question to you, about 30 seconds left to go. How many candidates do you see not making it alive out of New Hampshire? 
I think, uh, with the exception, obviously, of Mike Huckabee, John, I think everybody's going to uh, see what they what type of juice they've got for the next week and then uh, reassess. My guess is there'll be a couple, uh, three, that after next Tuesday will probably have to drop out for lack of support or lack of funds. All right, so three on the chopping block, perhaps, from Craig Shirley. But, gentlemen, great to talk with you. Look forward to having you both back real soon. Uh, General Dees, uh, Robert Dees, Ben Carson's campaign chairman, also with us, Craig Shirley. Shirley and Bannister. Again, you can always get Craig's new book about Ronald Reagan in the last coming days. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, John. See you on the high ground. Thank you, General. Coming up next, Donald Trump was once pretty confident about winning the evangelical vote in Iowa. So why did Ted Cruz easily take that support away from him? We'll discuss that with our roundtable. Some of the other missteps Trump may have made in the Hawkeye State. We're coming right back after this.